Hi and welcome to my Python YouTube channel. It's awesome to have you here. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be great. And make sure to subscribe for future videos. I also have a blog at prospercoder.com with lots of cool stuff, so feel free to check it out. In the previous parts, we were using different key widgets like label, button, slider, etc. But each time there was only one widget at a time. This is not what even the most trivial apps look like. Even a pretty basic app will have at least a couple of widgets. In this part, we're going to see how to address this issue. You can also read the written version of this video on my Python programming blog at prospercoder.com. Actually, there are two ways we can do it. We can either create our custom widgets or use layouts. In our project, we'll stick to the latter. But still, let's have a look at custom widgets as well for a minute. We can create our custom widgets by inheriting from the widget class. Then we can put a couple of the standard widgets you already know into it. So technically speaking, we're still going to have just one widget, but it will look as if there were more. Suppose we need text input and two buttons, so three widgets all together. So let's create a custom widget that contains these three elementary widgets. Here is the Python code. Well, we're going to inherit from the widget class, so we must import it first. So we don't need the slider over here. Let's import from kvuix widget the widget class. And now we have to add a class that inherits from widget. So class my custom widget inherits from widget. And we're going to implement it in the Kiwi file. So let's use a pass statement here. Fine. And now, in the build method of the Hello World app class, we have to return our custom widget. So return my custom widget. Fine. And now, we're leaving the implementation of this custom widget for the Kiwi file. Let's go there. And we need to implement the my custom widget class here. So my custom widget. There's going to be a text input and two buttons. So we don't need this. Let's add the text input. Text input, which is going to have the hint text property. Hint text set to type something, for example. And there are going to be two buttons. Button with the text property set to press me and another button with the text property set to press me to. Fine. Now in the code above, my custom widget is containing angled brackets because this is the so-called rule class notation. This is how we use classes in Kiwi language. The text input and the two buttons are not contained in angle brackets because these are instances. This is how we make the distinction between class and instance in Kiwi. And now look what happens if I run this app. Let's save it first and let's run it. Where is the text input and the first button? because this is the second button, press me too. Well, they are there, just stacked on top of each other under the second button. 
our custom widget fills the whole window and its particular components are all in the lower left corner of the window. We're now coming to the point where we have to do something with the position and size of our widgets. All widgets have the pass and size properties, which you can use to position and scale them appropriately. Each of the two properties is defined as a pair of fixed coordinates in pixels. In Kivi, the coordinate 0, 0 is in the bottom left corner, which is just like in math, but unlike in a lot of other frameworks. Anyway, let's set the positions of the three components in our custom widget so that we can see them all. So let's go back to our Kivi file. Now let's start with the text input. We want to position the text input 20 pixels from the left and 100 pixels from the bottom. This is where the lower left corner of the widget will be. So we have the pass property, 20 pixels from the left, 150 pixels from the button. Now the button. We want to position the button 20 pixels from the left and 20 pixels from the button. So pass 20, 20. And the other button. We want to position it 200 pixels from the left and 20 pixels from the bottom. So pass 220. Save. Run. If you now run the program, you will see this. The text input and the two buttons. So now at least you can see all three widgets. I don't particularly like their dimensions though. So let me scale them using the size property. Let's go back to our hello world dot kiwi file and now let's make the text input 300 by 40 pixels so size 300 by 40 and let's make the first button size 120 by 40 pixels and I think we could use the same size for the second button. Fine, let's save, go to main.py, run. Fine. Now the widgets will be scaled in a better way, I think. Okay. Now, if you like, you can also change other properties, like the color. So here, Let's change the color of the text on the button color to something like this 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.4 and alpha 1. Now this will be fully opaque. Now these fractions represent the components red, green and blue. Well these are proportions. You can calculate them by dividing the values of the corresponding components by 255. And now the color of the second button, let's use the same color here. And now let's save it and let's run it. Now the color of the text and the buttons is different. Good. Now, as you can see, the code in the Kiwi file is quite repetitive. In particular, the two buttons share some properties. So if you decide to change the color, for example, you have to do it twice, here and here. What if there were 10 buttons or more? The Kiwi code is easy to refactor. Let's just create a custom button and then use it in the custom widget. One more time, I'd like to emphasize that you use the angled brackets to define a class, but you don't use any brackets if you want to instantiate a widget of that class. And this will be visible in the following code. So first, let's define our custom button. It should inherit from the button class. 
To make a class inherit from another class in Kiwi, you must use the following syntax, where subclass inherits from class. So let's create a custom button. My custom button, which inherits from button. Good. Colon. And now, here, we're going to put all the code that is repeated in each button, which means the size and color. This is the same here and here. Let's copy it and paste it over here. Let's correct the indentation. And now we can remove this part from here and from here. And naturally, we have to use my custom button class instead of button now. So now these two buttons will still have these two properties set like here, plus their individual properties set like here. Let's save. If you now run the program, it will work just like before. Alternatively, you could define the My Custom Button class in Python code and inherit it from button there. Then you don't need the inheritance in Kiwi anymore. Let's just do it so that you can see how. So here's the Python code. First of all, we're going to need the button. So let's import from KV UIX button import button. And now here is the inheritance class my custom button inherits from button and we're going to implement it in the Kiwi file. So pass. And now let's go to the Kiwi file. And now the inheritance is in Python code. So we can remove it from here. Now all we have to do here is just implement this class. Let's save it. And if we run it now, we will still see the same. It works exactly as before. And now what happens if we try resizing the window? Let's try it out. Let's run the app again. And let's try resizing the window. So you will notice that the widgets are not adjusted accordingly. In most scenarios, you want them to be more flexible. The pass property that we've been using so far uses fixed positions in pixels, but you can also assign it a relative value. To this end, you can use two internal KV variables, root and self. What are the two variables then? You may be familiar with the self variable that is used in Python as a reference to the object in which it's used. It works exactly the same in Kiwi. The other variable, root, is a reference to the widget class at the top of the hierarchy. So let's have a look at the Kiwi file again. Now, if you use the self variable inside one of the My Custom button instances, it'll be a reference to that very instance. If you use root inside a my custom button instance, it will be a reference to my custom widget, which is at the top of the hierarchy. We use dot notation to access the particular properties of the widgets referenced by self and root. Having said that, we can now rewrite the Kiwi code so that the positions of the internal widgets, the text input and the two custom buttons are more flexible. Let's have a look. Let's start with the text input. Well, we don't want to change the size, but we want to change the position to something like this. Now, 
the x coordinate of the text input should be equal to the x coordinate of the whole custom widget. My custom widget, which is the root. So root.x. Let's add a 20 pixel offset to it so that it doesn't cling to the window. This is the offset. So the left side border of text input should be 20 pixels to the right for the left side border of the custom widget. Now the Y coordinate should be relative to the top border of the custom widget, which is referenced by root. So the top border of the custom widget, but if you leave root top, you won't see the text input widget because its lower side will be on the top border of the window and the rest of it will be outside the custom widget and outside the window. This is why we have to subtract the text input's height. So minus self height. So the top border of the custom widget minus the height of this text input. Additionally, let's subtract 20 to give some more room. Fine. And now let's move on to the button. We want to change the pass property so that the button is relative to the roots X and Y coordinates. Let's change it here. Now the Y coordinate is the one at the bottom of the widget. We'll add a 20 pixel offset again. So 20 pixels away to the right from the left border of my custom widget and 20 pixels in the upward direction from the bottom border of my custom widget. Now the second button, let's change the pass property to, to something like this. So the other button will be relative to the right border of the custom widget, which is this, the right border of the custom widget. Again, we have to subtract its width in order to see it. We'll add an offset again of 20 pixels. So this is the right border of the custom widget minus the width of my custom button minus 20. The Y coordinate of the button will be relative to the bottom border of the root widget and we'll add an offset of 20 pixels again. Now let's save it and let's run it. So this is what you see. Now these three elements are relative to the outer widget into which they are embedded. Now try resizing the window again and you can see that these widgets are moving along. This is because the positions are no longer fixed but rather relative to different parts of the root widget. And here's a visualization of all the values that you can see in the code. This should help you understand what is what even more. Now pause the video and have a look at this and make sure to understand which property is where and how they are relative to one another. Well, if this way of positioning widgets doesn't seem very clear and intuitive to you, the good news is that most of the time we'll be using a more straightforward way of doing it. But first we need to talk about layouts. We'll be talking about all the properties that you can use to position widgets in more detail when we need them. For now it's enough to know how the X, Y, top and right properties are used, maybe also height and width. And now in the next part, let's move on to Kiwi layouts. Okay, that's it for this video. If you like it, a thumbs up would be great. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos. If you want to leave a comment or ask a question, you're welcome to do so. Thanks for watching.